around is so good. Um, it just feels so good. Welcome to Drive Culture. I'm Jonathan Rivers, and today we have the 1999 Honda Prelude Type SH. And I'm gonna tell you why this is one of my favorite generations of the Prelude. So we'll go over the exterior, the interior, the powertrain, and of course, take it for a drive. So if this is content you're after, or you're new to the channel, please be sure to click that bell to subscribe to come back for more. And with that, let's get after it. Now, the 1999 Honda Prelude we have here is a special one. If you can't just tell from the video alone, this car is absolutely pristine. It is amazing, literally a time capsule. And that's because it actually comes from American Honda's collection hall. So thank you so much, Carl and Patrick, you guys are the best. Uh, but this truly is like going back in time. Everything on this car, except the tires, which we'll get to in a second, is original. And again, pristine, down to the paint, the body, the gaps, the interior. I mean, this car, as of today, still has less than 3,500 miles on it, despite being like over a quarter century old. I mean, so it's really amazing the condition of this vehicle. But before we jump right into the styling and stuff like that, let's talk about the Prelude. You know, let's go back in the history a bit. So for those, uh, you know, Honda Prelude fanboys out there, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on any of my stuff, but this goes back all the way to 1979. That's when the first generation of Prelude launched in the U.S. And really what it was, was essentially a derivative of the Accord at the time, because the Accord was the sedan, so the Prelude essentially became the Accord Coupe, right? It was this new model to give this kind of sleek body style. So there was the first gen in the 70s, then you got in the Gen 2 in the early 80s, Gen 3 in the mid 80s, going into the 90s, which I know a lot of people like Gen 3. Um, of course, then you got into Gen 4. Now, Gen 4 kind of was a bigger departure than any of the ones previous, because it went to much more like smooth body lines. It had like the different kind of almost rounder style taillights out rear, and then, this generation, the fifth generation Prelude, the final generation, came out in 1996 and went all the way to 2001, with 1999, this model year here, actually being a minor refresh, which introduced this Type SH trim and some new features and content. So really cool that we were able to get this specific trim and this last generation here on the channel. So one of the other crazy things was when this car came out, MSRP back then was $26,365. So by inflation today, that makes it 1.5 million, right? So, I mean, obviously things are a lot more expensive, but uh, I think given the price point at the time, it was pretty darn competitive. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the exterior of this Prelude Type SH. So, First, as I always like to do, let's talk about the color. So this one is really interesting, right? Because it's actually called crystal blue metallic, which I think is interesting because does this look blue to you? I mean, admittedly, if I lift off my glasses, I see a lot of blue flake in there, but from most angles, it looks silver. But again, I, I see the blue there and it looks really, really nice. Now, one of the things that I really liked about this generation Prelude was these super sharp character lines that carried down the hood, not to mention these kind of iconic, you know, squared off headlights. For me, again, I think this is my favorite generation of styling for the Prelude. So very nice, you know, uh, early Honda badge there, kind of squared off. Prelude spelled out here in the grill, so that was a thing back then too. And again, you even had fog lights down below. But for me, one of the cool things about this car is just how low and wide it is, not only on the exterior, but also on the interior of the vehicle as well. So let's make our way here on the side. I'll let you guys get a whole profile of the car and take it in because it truly shows off its sporty intentions, low and wide with that really, really cool deck lid spoiler. Now, Let's talk about the wheel and tire package as we often do. So the, that's like I said, this is the one area of the car that actually 
isn't OEM original. The tires that came with this car were Goodyear Eagle Sport. Now, they're the same series tires here, but these are some upgraded tires that, of course, had to be replaced after 25 years of being driven. So these are Michelin Pilot Sport all-season tires. But like I said, they're the same series as the original. So they're 205 50R 16s, right? So again, back in the day, 16-inch wheels were pretty big, pretty sporty, right? Classic five-spoke, you know, Honda wheel design. Love the old school H badge in there. Looks so clean. Uh, I really, really like the overall design of it. But for me, like I said, just the very squared off kind of angular profile of this Prelude and the character line that follows the entire body line, it truly shows off the shape and proportions. And for me, like I said, I think it's the my favorite of all of the Preludes. So square wheel and tire setup out back. So let's go to the rear here. Now, for me, this is also one of my favorite views for the Prelude. Part of it, I think, is just, again, the deck lid is very short. Um, it also has these long angular, you know, kind of tail lights, which was really a signature Honda and Acura element in the 90s and early 2000s. Super cool is it has the 3D Honda badge, but also Prelude spelled out in chrome letters down below. It's really, really nice touch point. Now, there's also some cool badges back here, or if we want to call them badges, they're really stickers, right? So one is the DOHC VTEC. Yeah, that's right. This car has real variable valve timing with electronic control, guys. So VTEC is definitely going to kick in during the drive. And then off to the side, you got another sticker that says Type SH. So uh, quick quiz, what does SH stand for? Write your comments down below. Okay, enough, I'll tell you. It stands for super handling. And you're gonna go, well, wait a minute, isn't that something Acura uses today? And that is true because in Acura's current lineup, they use SH all-wheel drive to talk about their torque vectoring all-wheel drive system. Well, this Honda Prelude also, guess what? Doesn't have all-wheel drive. It's actually a front-wheel drive vehicle, but it has ATTS, which stands for Active Torque Transfer System. So this was one of the first times they put torque vectoring in their cars, and it's at the front two wheels. So admittedly, some of the reviewers and journalists back in the day when they drove this car, there were kind of some uh, arguments as to really how beneficial it was and how much it actually helped handling, but we will try it out during the drive and let you know our thoughts and impressions. So other than that, again, I love the spoiler, which was actually a part of this Type S H package, right? So you got the ATTS uh, differential, you got the spoiler, and a leather wrapped steering wheel as part of this Type S H package. But for me, you know, man, that exhaust still looks good today. The dual uh, kind of dual tip exhaust off to the right. And like I said, this squared off shape looks fantastic. So I think that kind of covers all the exterior details. So next, let's go ahead and hop inside to talk about the interior. All right, here we are inside the 1999 Honda Prelude Type SH. And boy, is this, like I said, it's just a time capsule, right? It is pristine in here. It's probably nicer and cleaner than my own Integra Type S, right? So that, that says a lot here, right? And like I said, in the exterior, the uh, there's only 3,000 448 miles on this car right now. So, I mean, that is absolutely incredible given how old this vehicle is. But uh, it truly is taking me back in time here, right? Because admittedly, this was like when I was like in high school, going into college, like this was one of the cars to have. And it still feels that way today. It's still very sporty. Uh, you know, I just love the low cowl and dash. Um, you know, cars today can't really pull that off, right? Regulations have made vehicles big bigger, uh, they have to be higher up, you know, the hood line has to be higher. So to just be able to sit in and see out like you can in this vehicle, that in itself feels special in today's, uh, you know, marketplace. But uh, gotta love the super small diameter Honda steering wheel. Uh, it was leather wrapped for this Type SH trim, so it feels really good. But um, also just love the simplicity behind it, right? Because, um, you know, even the H badge, it's like, 
you know, embossed into the airbag cover. There's no chrome H badge here. So that's kind of unique. Uh, you get two huge buttons to honk the horn <laughs> if you needed to do that to someone. Uh, and then you also get some cruise control functions for resume and set. And, th you know, those are just off to the side, but there's no other buttons, right? There's no all of the controls that we get today. Um, you know, traditional, uh, you know, winker and, you know, uh, wiper uh, stocks here, very simple. But for me, the gauges, man, the gauges ages just scream 90s and 2000s you know very very easy to read fonts looks really cool uh, love the red needles the red line everything just looks and feels so good um, the dash like I said very very clean design for this car still remember it back how it was back then uh, you know, very, very kind of by today's standards, you know, simple controls, right? So you get, you know, very slider like controls for the HVAC. But I tell you what, I was driving it over here and it was pumping out some really strong and cold air. So again, kudos to the Honda engineers from 30 years ago. Your car still works fine. Uh, really, really good. Um, and again, kind of dating itself, you know, you've got this kind of cutout for the radio. Now, uh, to kind of go back in time, you know, that was a thing where you had a double din radio now in this case it's a single din radio with a little cubby spot here but you know in the 90s and 2000s people were quickly swapping out their head units and it was so funny because you would this part would literally just pop out this unit would you know slide out and you'd put in a new head unit so what was it kenwood back in the day guys let us know what you guys use for your head unit alpine maybe yeah um, but yeah i mean again it just brings back so many memories now We'll talk about this more during the drive, but the Type SH trim only came with a five-speed manual transmission. The other non-Type SH trims and other generations, there was, uh, I believe it was a four-speed automatic available, um, but you know, really awesome that this car has a five-speed manual. We'll talk about that during the drive. Of course, you got the old school side brake here. Um, what looks like probably could be like a little cigarette holder, um, places for your cup holders, little center console, nice size glove box but let's talk about these seats i mean they feel fantastic i love that there's lots of side bolstering down low um, not much up top for the shoulders but even down here by your hips not overly aggressive but just enough to keep you in place especially while you're probably doing some spirited driving and gotta love the uh the fabric and material right again this doesn't uh you know you don't really see this in today's marketplace so really really cool and of course even down on the floor mats is just a big h mark on the passenger side and it says prelude here on the driver's side as well uh, lastly, a couple things, you know, it does come with a power opening uh, moonroof. So even back then you had features like that, that's really nice. But other than that, it had like a, you know, six speaker system, which was fine for back in the day. Um, it wasn't really about features. It was about getting in this car and driving. So as tight as it might be, let's quickly have me hop inside so you can see the rear seats. All right, guys, here we are in the rear of the 1999 Honda Prelude Type SH. Um, this is my actual driving position and I don't have a lot of room back here. Really the problem is my feet. Like I can barely fit my feet under this front seat here. So that's really the, the one thing. I, my knee isn't quite touching, but almost. Um, surprisingly, like headroom wise and like going across here, I actually got decent space. Um, there's a, you know, a cup holder on this side, a little pocket on this side. Clearly it's only a four passenger vehicle. You're not gonna fit anyone here in the middle seat. Um, there's no armrest or anything that pulls down. Um, but I guess, you know, like again, this was a little coupe. Um, you know, if you're gonna have small kids, um, back in the day, they could have fit back here. Of course, there was no latches and stuff, but uh, you probably wouldn't want your friends wouldn't want to sit back here too long. So uh, with that, next, let's go ahead and hop out and talk about the cargo space. All right, guys, next, let's talk about the cargo space of this 1999 Honda Prelude Type SH. So to get in, uh, let's first talk about the key, right? So it is the old school mechanical key here, right? There's no fancy push button start or, or start with your cell phone, right? We're going back to the 90s and 2000s here. But, you know, even on this additional, right, kind of remote lock and unlock, it says Honda on it. So I think it's a nice little touch point, but it's a totally separate device from the actual key. And to get into the trunk, you actually have to use the uh, mechanical key. Of course, there's a lever inside, but we're gonna do that lift it up there she goes and again just like the rest of the car this thing is pristine i mean it looks like it literally just rolled out of the dealer i mean there's not a speck of dust in this trunk here now the one thing about this car is there was nine cubic feet of space back here so 
not a lot, but not horrible either. I mean, you could easily fit, you know, maybe one good me medium-sized suitcase probably, or like a duffel bag or two. Like you could fit some stuff back here. Like today's modern, huge like luggage though, it may not fit. And it doesn't even look like you're gonna be able to put a lot of stuff through the pass-through area. So you're kind of limited on space, but again, admittedly, this was a fun sporty coupe, so not necessarily a utilitarian vehicle. So next, let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain. All right, next, let's talk about the powertrain of this Prelude Type SH. Now, this, like I said, was a you know special edition in the fact that um, in 1999, they made a mid-cycle refresh to create this Type SH. Um, and like I said, it had its own configuration for the drivetrain. Now, the engine here, for all you geeks, is the H22A4. It was a 2.2 liter inline four, of course, naturally aspirated. It made 200 horsepower, but at a very high 7,000 RPM and 156 pound-feet of torque at around 5,250 RPM. So I don't normally put the RPM numbers out there. The reason why I'm focusing on it is because you got to ring this thing out, right? You got to get into VTEC and let this thing sing, which we'll do here in a second. Now, in this case, it was front wheel drive, but like I said, there was that special diff, the ATTS, active torque transfer system that tried to help put power down by giving uh, the ability to push out power to one wheel as you're coming out of a turn. Uh, that aside, the Prelude also had a really awesome chassis, right? The chassis code for this car was BB6, uh, and it had double wishbone at all four corners. So this thing was truly a great handling vehicle, but there's no better way than to prove that out than to get behind the wheel. So next, let's go ahead and take this thing for a drive. All right, guys, here we are inside this 1999 Honda Prelude Type SH, and we're gonna go ahead and take this thing for a drive. So go ahead and uh, grab my seatbelt here. Um, it's funny, this car still smells like it's new. I know that's hard to believe, but you know, with just under 3,500 miles on this, you know, 25 year old vehicle, it it still smells new in here. It's really a weird feeling, but uh, you know, I've got the uh, the mechanical key in, so clutch in, starts right up. Luckily, no issues there. I've heard this car again. It's uh, it's been running really well. I mean, of course, they uh, kind of keep it on a, a battery trickle charger and you know keep up the maintenance and things like that. But um, this car, uh, it, it's already you can tell it just it's in really really good running condition and driving condition. So uh, let's go ahead and take this thing for a drive. So uh, side brake off. Uh, Got to get into reverse. Um, no backup cameras here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, get into reverse. And man, I can already tell you that <laughs> this transmission is really, really good. I mean, hey, it's a Honda, right? Honda Acura makes some of the best, uh, you know, manual shifting, uh, you know, transmissions in the business. And already, this uh, feels like it's uh, it's gonna hold its own. Um, it's a really, really tight shifting transmission. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's just so, again, for me, this is so much nostalgia driving these older types of products, right? As this is the kind of the era I grew up in, but um, it's amazing how this car just, again, that was just up to 4,000 RPM. Won't get to VTEC just yet, um, but just how pure this driving experience feels, right? There's not all these distractions. There's not all these, uh, this guy just staring at me as I drive by. Um, you know, there's not all these like screens and distractions and safety things beeping and blurting. And there's, I mean, it's just so simple, right? Everything was so much simpler back then. Now, of course, I think long-term, if you were living with something like this, you would want all the modern amenities and you'd hope for all that stuff. But man, just to be able to take this thing out, like I said, it, it feels truly special in today's age. Um, you know, like I said, one of the things is this uh, steering wheel, right? It's uh, it's so small, diameter, uh, the, the hood is so low on the Prelude, the dash, the cowl, everything is so low, and you got pretty thin A-pillars here too, so excellent visibility, the car's really low to the ground. Um, the other thing about this car is that, you know, it's really, really light, especially by today's standards. So this car is uh, 3,085 pounds in this particular trim. So um, again, that's pretty light by today's standards where cars are frequently, you know, four or five, 6,000 plus pounds. So to be at right at, you know, 3,000 pounds is pretty darn good. And uh, I can already tell you like this, again, the way it feels, it, it feels like this car just came out of the showroom. Um, 
Um, one of the things that I will say though, as good as the transmission is, I feel like it's going to be a little hard to heel and tow. So some of the pedal placement uh, for me is not perfect. Part of that is I got big feet. Um, but I think outside of that, the transmission itself, uh, the shifting of the gears, all that feels really good. So we're going to go ahead and set off here. And so yeah, VTEC, I mean, <laughs> if you can hear that, I mean, pretty much once you get past, you know, I'd say 5,000, almost, five, almost 5,500 RPM is where VTEC kicks in. And it's just like all the memes. VTEC really kicked in, yo. Like the car all of a sudden kind of like surges forward with power. You get that awesome, uh, you know, when the cam profile changes, you get that awesome sound. It just, it, it kind of transforms the car, right? Because anything below that, the car is pretty docile. And I mean, you don't actually have much power above anything from like maybe 2,500 RPM. Um, again, that's one of the things about these older, naturally aspirated, you know, small displacement engines. You really had to ring it out to get to the power because like I said in the powertrain yeah it's got 200 horsepower which don't get me wrong even a modern Civic Si has 200 horsepower but the key difference is like I said this car doesn't hit that peak power until 7,000 rpm where like you know if you're driving one of the modern cars like an Si you know that's hitting it at a much much lower rpm so you got that low range power and grunt but admittedly there is something you know just fun and like you know pure about you know revving these cars out um, the other thing I'll talk about, um, you know, before I get into it here is like, again, like these seats, like I talked about it just in the interior portion, but man, these seats feel fantastic, right? Like they just hug you in all the right places and doesn't feel overly bolstered, not hard, not too soft. Like these would be just awesome seats that you could definitely get used to driving every single day. Um, the other thing, like I said, as much as I was talking about forward visibility, um, it's amazing in these cars, like how much like side glass you have, um, out back, there's so much glass back there. So you got tons of visibility. Uh, admittedly, you do get that rear decklet spoiler in your rear view, um, but it's not super high and doesn't actually impede your visibility. I mean, part of it is you're sitting so low in this car that, you know, if anyone's behind you, right, um, you know, they're much higher than you are anyway. So, um, so I've, again, I just, some of the ergonomics, right? Some of the simplicity is just something that you can't really, you know, replicate in today's modern cars. So uh, just really really excited to be able to take this thing for a drive so uh, just give me one more second here where I can actually get to a place where I can actually test out that VTEC um, but while I do that let us know your guys thoughts and comments down below uh, I know I asked this before but tell us you know what is your favorite generation prelude tell us why tell us if you want to see other generations of the prelude here on the channel of course we're happy to bring that to you uh, and again if there's any other you know kind of classic you know Hondas Acuras or other you know makes and models that's fine too let us know if you want to see that here on the channel we're happy to bring it to you uh, because like I said there's still something special about driving uh, a car like this especially that is so low mileage and it's so mint so uh, we're gonna go ahead here and uh, you know have a little bit of fun all right we're gonna go ahead and take off here shift in a second to the floor <laughs> man that uh that sounds really really good here um yeah we'll get into it again in a second so we can take it all the way to VTEC. but it, like i said just the engine sound everything changes so drastically it's so funny right it's really like two different personalities with the car and that was always one of the things now it was obviously you know exaggerated back in the days of the fast and the furious and stuff like that when VTEC kicked in but it really is a thing like the car really does lurch forward so let's see if i can get right into it so Yeah, I mean, it feels so good. It sounds so good. And there's just something fun about ringing this thing out to red lines. So uh, let's see if I can actually test out some of the, uh, the handling here. Because like I said, having double wishbone suspension at all four corners is pretty special. So here we go. Just kind of get into it a little bit. And yeah, I mean, man, this car really just kind of pivots on itself. It's really good. And then there's me too. <laughs> that was all the way to red line. But I mean... All right, so there was heel and toe, not too bad. Uh, brakes are good, but man, just the way this car like handles, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, man, the way this thing just kind of rips around is so good. Um, 
it just feels so good. And I mean, you can just, like, the handling is so sharp. And there we go, B take. <laughs> this car is fast. I, well, by, by, by its standards of the time, because I think most magazines, you know, they were clocking this thing around like seven seconds, zero to 60. <laughs> I believe it, man. This thing is actually gets up. Now, you know, again, it takes a minute to actually rev it up and get out to that performance. But when it does, man, this thing actually gets up and go. It's a lot of fun to drive, guys. So let's do one last pull here before we wrap up this video. Appreciated just how good it, it is to rev out. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. So, hey guys, this is too much fun. Let us know, like I said, if you want to see more content like this on the channel. Happy to bring it to you. And with that, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. All right, guys, that's a wrap. What did you think of the 1999 Honda Prelude Type SH? Is this your favorite generation of Prelude? Let us know your guys' thoughts and comments down below. Let us know if you do want to see other generations of Prelude here on the channel. Of course, we're happy to bring it to you. And if Honda does come out with that new sixth generation hybrid coupe, let us know if you'd love to see that in the future as well, because we're happy to bring all this content to you. So if you've joined us before, thank you so much. But if you're new to the channel, please be sure to click that bell to subscribe to come back for more. Thanks, and we'll see you at the next episode.